Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be here and wonderful to be with you all after this year and a half of being separated from the people we love. And I love you all. I want to start by introducing some people who play an important part in our chapel services. First, our chapel pre prefects. I'll ask them to stand as I call their names. Amy Del Cid. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you to hold your applause till they're all on their feet. Otherwise, it'll take forever. Um, Catherine Duane, please stand, stay up. Um, Tori Duckworth, Ava Feingold, Vivian Gao, Catherine Gutkowski, Camilla Johnson, Ellie McQueen, Amy Mojica, and Jack O'Brien, who's not with us because he's in California visiting colleges. Um, these are a great group of people. I'm really looking forward to working with them in chapel this year. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also want to introduce some people in the music uh, in, in the music arena. Most of you know our amazing, amazing organist, Mr. H Mr. Humphreyville. Mr. Humphreyville, will you stand up? And <laughs> this man can play the organ with both hands, both feet, read a book, carry on a conversation, and light candles all at the same time. I don't know how he does it. Um, I also want to uh, recognize uh, our new director of music, Dr. Brucey. And, and our new choral director, Ms. McCormick. I'm really looking forward to working with all these folks to, uh, uh, to enliven our chapel, our, our chapel experience this year. Chapel is where we come together as the Brooks community. And all of these folks help make our chapel services the best they can be. I don't think it would be possible to overemphasize how important community is for all of us. We human beings can't exist without community. Our American culture puts a huge emphasis on individualism, and there are Americans sometimes who think and act as if they have no connection to other people, and we've seen a good deal of that in the last year and a half. But the truth is that none of us can survive more than a couple of days without community. We'd starve or go nuts. Um, we exist in communities, our families, our friend groups, our schools, our clubs, our teams, our churches, our towns or cities, and our nations, and ultimately, we exist in the world community of all human beings. We depend on our community for life. But at the same time, living in community is really a challenge. None of us is perfect, and no community is perfect, and living together can be a struggle. We have moments of joy, delight, and wonder, and love, and we also have moments of frustration, of disappointment, of hurt, and in anger. And in the last year, we've been talking a lot about some of the frustrations that many members of this community and our national community have felt around issues of racism, equity, and fairness. Um, our reading this morning talks about the challenge of living in community. Kent Keith says, people are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyway. Give the world the best you have, and you'll get kicked in the teeth but give the world the best you have anyway. And that's not always easy to do, but I believe that it's the secret to a full and rewarding life. We sometimes struggle in community, but it's the struggle of community that teaches us over time who we really are. The pains and hurts and the joys and love of community over time shape us. Over time, they teach us how to know our true selves, how to discover who we really, really are deep down inside. They teach us to live with joy and love in spite of any of the troubles and challenges we face. Socrates said, know thyself. Jesus of Nazareth, a person whom I admire quite a bit, said, God is within you. It's the same message. The message, and it's the same message of all the religions and all the great religious teachers. To know oneself is to also know 
the spirit of infinite love that lives deep in the heart of every one of us. It's to know oneself is to know the Holy One who has a thousand names, the one who in our culture is most often called God. That spirit calls us to commit. That spirit calls us to commit to finding that deep, deep love within us and within all the people around us that we share in community. And it's in committing to do that that we begin to find out who we are and that we begin to find out who the Spirit of God is. Commit yourself to life, to loving others, to share your being with those in this community and all the communities that you're part of. The reward of that is the best reward of all. It's to be filled with love and life and joy. So my friends, take a chance on the spirit. You'll never be sorry. Thank you for listening. Thank you.